Lenovo's Legion 5 is generally a great mid-range gaming laptop, but like all things in life, it's not perfect. I've covered the seven problems that I've got with this laptop and how to fix them to help you decide if it's worth considering. Now, I wanna start out by noting that I think the Legion 5 is one of the better gaming laptops currently out there. I would personally pick it over many others. The fact is, you're never gonna find the perfect gaming laptop. So it's going to come down to knowing about potential problems, how to fix them, and what the trade-offs are. So with that out of the way, these are the seven problems that I've got with the Legion 5. Number 1. The Power Brick The Power Brick that comes with the Legion 5 is fairly large and heavy considering the specs inside the laptop. My laptop here has a Ryzen 7 5800H processor and NVIDIA RTX 3060 graphics, yet it comes with a 300 watt Power Brick. Most other gaming laptops with similar hardware that I've tested have 180 watt or maybe 230 watt bricks. Now the wattage in itself isn't necessarily the problem, it's just that generally high wattage bricks are going to be physically bigger. I mean, laptops are meant to be portable devices after all, so if you have to carry around around a huge power brick, it kind of defeats the purpose. Now it seems that some people have resolved this issue by buying a 230 watt brick from Lenovo, and I believe in some regions that's also offered with lower spec versions of the Legion. It seems to vary though. Now I haven't personally tested the 230 watt brick with these specs, so I can't say whether or not it's enough to deliver full power. But if you are someone that values portability and doesn't necessarily need full performance on the go, then buying a 230 watt brick might be a better option. Problem number two, Wi-Fi. When I bought my Legion 5, it came with a Wi-Fi 6 real card. And personally, I haven't really had any issues with Wi-Fi, so to speak. I did run some basic Wi-Fi benchmarks, and I found that compared to other gaming laptops, the Legion 5 with that Realtek card was slower when compared to most alternatives. But other users online have been reporting other issues, such as low latency after sleep. And something else I just remembered was when I tried an Ubuntu 21 Live CD on this, so Linux, it didn't work with Wi-Fi out of the box. I suspect that was just because there wasn't drivers out of the box, and it's probably pretty easy to get working. But at the same time, the fact is, any laptop I've tested with Intel Wi-Fi has worked perfectly fine in Linux for me. Now generally this wouldn't be something that I would complain about, but some people have mentioned to me on Twitter that they bought the Legion 5 and it was advertised with Intel Wi-Fi, but they ended up getting the slower Realtek card. I can't verify this personally, but if that is actually the case and that's what happened, then it's kind of misleading on Lenovo's part. At the same time though, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, you can buy an Intel Wi-Fi 6 card for less than $20 and upgrade it yourself. I'm guessing that Lenovo might have had to use the Realtek cards if there was a shortage of the Intel ones. I mean, we are in the great 2021 year of supply shortages after all, so that wouldn't be too surprising. And speaking of part shortages, number three, the slower memory. Basically, the problem here, if you could call it that, is that in many regions, the Legion ships with slower X16 memory. Now, I've compared this laptop in a ton of games at all setting levels, both with its stock memory and with upgraded memory in this video here, if you want to see the differences. But basically, long story short, it is possible to get a reasonable performance boost in the Legion 5 by upgrading the memory. When I first discovered this issue with the slower memory, it was with the Legion 5 Pro. Now granted that is a more premium model than the regular Legion 5. The fact is, before 2021 we didn't really see that slower X16 memory that often. Now it just seems to be everywhere. So again, I think we've just got the year of supply shortages to thank for that one. Fortunately, like the Wi-Fi card, this is at least something that can be upgraded with money. So it kind of sucks if you have to go out and spend even more money on your Legion 5 after buying it, but at the same time I don't really think this is that big of a deal. Because the fact is, even with the X16 memory, I was still seeing great gaming performance from this laptop for a 36 machine, and that's thanks to its mock switch and full powered RTX 3060 GPU. So yeah, basically if you have the Legion 5, just play some games on it and see if you think it's fine. If you think it's slow or you want a speed boost and you've got some money, then upgrading the memory might be an option. Number 4, the touchpad. This isn't really something I noticed until recently, as I've been using my Legion 5 to do a lot of comparisons on the channel, as it's the best laptop I've got that has a 3060. Basically I noticed the right side of the touchpad is kind of a little more loose compared to the left. It wasn't really a big issue that I personally had while using the laptop, but I wanted to point it out as I know that is an issue a lot of people care about. And after the whole loose touchpad fiasco with the Dell XPS last year, yeah, I figured it was just worth mentioning. But I suppose that type of thing might vary by unit. So if any of you have a Legion 5, then let me know in the comments how your touchpad is. Hopefully it's just a QC issue with my unit or something. Number five, fan control, or lack thereof. Now it's probably not picked up by my microphone, but right now I can hear the fans on the Legion 5 even though it's just sitting here idle in the lowest quiet mode doing absolutely nothing.
Oh, that's no problem at all, just lower the fan speed. Well, I can't because there's no fan control. Now, I did speak to Lenovo about this back when this was first launching, and basically they said that they chose not to implement fan control because they thought it would be too confusing for most users. Personally, I think that's a bit of a weak excuse. Even if that was the case, you could still have everything working as it currently is, but then also just have a secret shortcut to enable the fan boost. Now, obviously, full software control over the fan speed would be better, but hey, at this point, I'd take a shortcut to boost the fans to max speed over nothing. Because fact Fact is, in older Legion models, like I think the Y530 was the last one that did it, they had a shortcut built in that you could press to max out the fan, and at least that was something. If you want to max out the fan, you could do it, but if you didn't, then don't use the shortcut. Pretty simple. But for some reason, in newer Legion models, they've just removed that entirely. Now, to be fair to the Legion, it doesn't get quite as loud compared to most other gaming laptops I've tested. But still, I always say user control is best. Now, fortunately, some people have been working on third-party software to give the Legion fan control. There's beta software available through the Lenovo Legion Disk. Discord. I've left a link to that in the description below, but use the software at your own risk. I haven't personally tried it on my machine. Alright, problem number six, the screen. Now, it's not in itself a huge problem, because the fact is the screen still gets pretty bright, has decent color gamut, and the response time isn't too bad. The problem that I've got with it is that this year it's a 165Hz screen. Last year they used a 144Hz panel, but it ended up having a faster screen response time, proving yet again that refresh rate isn't everything. If you have a high refresh rate but low response time, you'll still notice ghosting. Now, that's that said, the response time on the 165Hz screen isn't terrible or anything, but at the same time it kind of feels like a bit of a downgrade compared to the 144Hz panel of last year's model. And I don't know about you, but personally I like to see things going forward rather than backwards. And number 7, pricing and availability. I guess this is kind of tied in with the Wi-Fi and RAM issues noted earlier, but parts shortages all around just mean that the Legion 5 can be hard to get your hands on. It's either going to cost more than it probably should, or it's going to be out of stock for months. I check the Lenovo Australia and US website pretty much daily because because I'm on the lookout for that 6600M model. And it's pretty common to see the Legion 5 with shipping times of 4 plus months, which is pretty insane. Based on rumors, we might have Nvidia RTX 30 Super Series by then. So it would kind of suck if we got new CPUs and GPUs in the Legion 5 and you were still waiting on last gen. Again, I can't be too harsh on Lenovo for this because it's not a problem that only they're faced with. Yet again, I would just like to thank the year 2021 for supply shortages. I've said it before, but it is what it is, even if it does suck. Oh, and special shout out to that issue where H.264 didn't work on some models in some countries. This caused things like Nvidia Shadowplay not to work, but apparently that has been resolved with the latest BIOS, so if you can't do that then I'd suggest upgrading. Hopefully I didn't come off as too negative in this video. Like I mentioned earlier, I really do think the Legion 5 is one of the better mid-range gaming laptops you can currently get. Well, if you can get it. Again, constantly out of stock like I just mentioned. I think it's just important to be aware of both the good and the bad before you go and spend thousands of dollars of your money. And although the Legion does have those issues I just mentioned, fact is most of them are pretty easy to fix. So at least there's no major deal breakers like some other models I've tested. Check out my full review of the Legion 5 on my main channel if you want all the details about this laptop. Or check this one out if you want to see how well it performs in games after the memory upgrade. Otherwise if you're new to the channel then get subscribed for future laptop videos like this one.